Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no, no, everybody. No, no, no. So, okay. Will you give me? Now you can. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Melissa Esposto. Take the privilege to be a trainer resource person for the training session by the training learning and development department of the International Internship University. International Internship University, IIU, is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing a better and virtual uh, education to all the young learners of the globe. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Payush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. And now I want to introduce myself. My name is Melissa Esposto and I am from Italy. I am a high school math teacher and I am interested in different and various projects, including a twinning project that is uh, twinning between different European schools. I have been teaching for more than 28 years after graduating in 1994. I am a NIRPOD certified educator, verified educator on Kaut Academy, and a puzzle coach and a weekly community leader. I am global community leader from GEN, Global Generation Education Network. In addition to teaching, I deal with the gamification and coding. I write mathematical texts for an Italian platform, edboom.it, and uh, my texts are converted into educational videos. I write for a website about great mathematicians and math anecdotes and riddles. I am interested in teaching methodologies, digital tools to be used in teaching, and I disseminate my knowledge throughout various international conferences. I am specialized in the sustainable development goals on the 2030 agenda, in particular, uh, goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. I am very proud and grateful for being a speaker for IIU during this session. The topic about I want to speak to you today is gamification in mathematics. Now I will share my screen and I will present my work. Let's begin. My research today is inspired by a passion for mathematics and teaching combined with an interest in new technologies and their use to facilitate learning and make it more effective. To these elements is added an observation that finds many comparisons in the literature and uh, that we often have the opportunity to experience. The attitude of, and perception we have toward the task influences our way of proceeding relating to it, as well as the final result of our efforts. Numerous researches show that even in the study of mathematics, there is a strong correlation between metacognitive thinking, affectivity, and the probability of success. Many, many cognitive and affective aspects in teaching of mathematics. The first studies dedicated to affectivity in mathematics focused attention on fear and were based on the belief that emotions represent the, an obstacle to cognitive thinking. Fear is, in general, the emotion that is most often associated with the mathematics, with the different nuances. Fear of making mistakes, um, or not remembering or, or disappointing in general someone's expectations of not being able. The range of emotions related to the mathematical experience, however, is wider and is composed of both feelings perceived as a negative, such as anger, anxiety, frustration, unhappiness, boredom, but also positive feelings, such as happiness, excitement, fun, trust, relief. In general, ne negative emotions are found much more frequently than positive ones. 
This means that the feelings expressed by students depend on both their view on mathematics and their relationship to it. The above may explain the result of some studies according to which mathematics is, in general, uh, the favorite subject of elementary uh, school children, but becomes the most detested by adolescents. The emotions aroused by matter change over the years, and this is due to the fact that continuing their studies, the students change their way of interpreting it. Reasons and objectives. Dealing with something that you find interesting and fun can facilitate learning processes and make the studies uh, more enjoyable. If you manage to transform what you must do, like studying a certain topic, into something you want to do, preferably with pleasure, the results obtained can only be better. This belief is not only the results of the common daily feeling, um, but one of the pillars of Vygotsky teaching according to which more, a more relaxed learning environment is much more profitable than a rigid and formal one. The objectives, therefore, are to set up an, an environment less rigid than that, uh, uh, what uh, uh, is commonly created in the classroom, which is familiar to students uh, and which leaves a room for a little humor while addressing school topics. Be able to involve students uh, so that they uh, themselves uh, want to continue applying in gamification to mathematics without needing uh, to be assigned uh, these uh, as a task. Gamification. The use of practices and strategies typical of games in contexts other than purely playful contexts is not an end in itself, nor as the sole and primary objective, as often happens for game proper to entertain users, but wants to achieve and increase the level of involvement and motivation of the users of the gamified um, uh, activity, choosing uh, as a reference the classification proposed by, by Weirbach and Dunter, the game elements that contribute to the gamification of an activity are classified into dynamics, which serve to set the gamified environment and include constraints and limitations, emotions, narrative developments, the progression of those who play and the relationships between the user community. Mechanics, which make the activity more engaging and therefore include the concepts of uh, challenge, cooperation, competition, feedbacks, words. And then components, which are the concrete aspects throughout which the first two are made. For example, avatars, badges, collection of the objects, fights, release of contents, uh, rankings, levels, points, teams. The combination of these elements, not, as, not necessarily all, uh, is a part of the game design phase. According to the Tardinger, the co cornerstones around which uh, an efficient gamification project should revolve are the responsible sense of a player involvement for which the proposed activities must have a well-defined meaning that may depend on the subjective experience of the user uh, or on a narrative context uh, of the application. Control, uh, for example, the awareness of possessing certain skills and abilities. It is not achieved simplistically by issuing badges or climbing a ranking, but it goes uh, deeper because uh, it requires the user to be satisfied with what he is able to do and what he has learned. Freedom, understood as the ability to choose when, where, and whether to engage in the activity in question. Gamification can play a role to amplifying the benefits in terms of satisfaction uh, and determination in moving towards the final goal de deriving from achieving and maintaining the flow, uh, the balance between the moods of anxiety and boredom. It is therefore necessary to propose activities that take into account the skills of the users so as not to cause frustration in case of repeated failures or boredom due to excessive ease. What is the gamification? It is well known uh, that games have accompanied the history of men of the millennia, and it is uh, a much studied topic. Neuroscientific studies clarify that the practice of the game directly affects some primary human instincts, such as the need of self for self-expression. <coughs> 
or the willingness to boost new challenges, allowing to create involvement, motivation, and fidelity. Yet the cultural imprint that has always accompanied the play phenomenon over time has severely limited its diffusion, relegating the game to a niche or entertainment practice uh, in frontier. Gamification is a term that is not entirely transparent, partly cont controversial, intended with a variety of accents deriving from a game, so it has to do with the, the idea of a game. Gamification is the use of elements borrowed from games and game design techniques in contexts outside the games. The use of game elements and game design within non-game contexts is the process of using game ideas and game dynamics to engage the audience in solving problems. The application of game mechanics and game design techniques to engage and motivate people to achieve their goals. The use of game mechanics and, and experience design to digitally engage and motivate people to achieve their goals. There are many other definitions, but these are sufficient to highlight how there is a substantial agreement among the experts who deal with the subject that gamification is a practice as it is implicit in the second part of the world. It consists in using specific aspects of the games game elements, game mechanics, uh, game design techniques, apply them no, to non-gaming contexts. The fourth and fifth definitions said that the, that the purpose of gamification is to engage, engage and motivate people towards their goals, an aspect not present in the definitions of the term. Dickerman, CEO of gamification, CEO with the professional skills and background in the field of gamification. And we're back in Hunter, uh, but implicit as widely presented in their texts. Equally, implicit is the fact, underlined by Brian Burke of Gartner, uh, that gamification produces the, its engagement of the digital terrain, all the platform it works on have this nature. In short, the various definitions have a good degree of conversance and are relatively uh, simple. Origin of the term. But when was this, this phenomenon work born? More uh, on this is necessary. The term gamification was proposed by the British game programmer Nick Pelling in 2002 and has acquired the relative popularity uh, since around 2010. Uh, so it has a rather recent origin. To trace the origin of gamification, we must go back to February 2010, when the DICE Summit was held in Las Vegas an annual event promoted by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences that brings together the best game designers, developers, and global investors to discuss the art of the industry and development trends. Facebook had been launched about six years ago, and online game, gaming was experiencing a, a significant surge thanks to titles such as Farmville, the famous social game that simulates the life of a farmer, launched in 2009, and which is in the same year became the most popular application on Facebook. On this occasion, Jess Schall, a famous video game designer, in his talk design, outside the box, box analyzes uh, the phenomenon of inviting everyone to a wider range of reflection of what was unexpected and revolutionary was happening. Jesse Shell was the first to manage to look up and take a photograph of um, a near future characterized uh, by an increasingly massive and irreversible penetration of some typical, typical dynamics of video games in everyday life. Goals of gamification. The general objective uh, of gamification is uh, to encourage the active interest of users. For example, the engagement involvement to change their behavior. From this statement, we can deduce that the gamification strategy is successful only if it significantly affects the habits and behavioral performance of the recipients. Dynamic mechanics and components. It is necessary to distinguish between dynamics and mechanics and components. Dynamics are the most abstract aspects that um, as a such do not enter directly into a gamified system. 
uh, but uh, serve to set it uh, up and include constraints and limitations, emotions, curiosity, competitiveness, narrative developments, storyline, uh, progressions uh, of who plays, relationships, uh, social interaction. The mechanics uh, are the basic uh, processes that push the action forward and determine uh, the player's involvement and include challenges to be overcome, uh, factors of randomness, competition, compression, uh, uh, feedbacks, acquisition of resources, rewards, transactions, rounds, sequences of participation between players, victories. The components represent the more specific forms that the dynamics and mechanics of the game can take and include achievements, avatar, badge, boss fights, collection of objects or badges, fights, specific battles, unblocking of contents, gifts, leaderboards, rankings, levels, points, research, missions with specific objectives and rewards, social graph, social network of games, team, virtual goods, the combinations between the list and the elements not to be intended as exhaustive, as the game involved continu continuously can be the most valid. At the same time, the game components are always linked to some mechanics and this it tool in some dynamics. In gamification, the challenges can be individual or team. In the second case, the collaborative principle is added to the competitive principle. And it is known that uh, if a team does not cooperate well internally, it almost always loses the game. In terms of gamification, this implies on the one hand that it is limiting to provide only individual competitions. And on the other, uh, that is necessary uh, to carefully calibrate the possibilities offered by group collaboration. Zickerman, in this regard, expresses a careful position on the fact that this aspect must be carefully examined, recalling that, as a research in psychology shows, there are very competitive people and people who are not very competitive. In general, women tend to be less competitive than men, whatever their culture or, or origin. Competitive participants are certainly very important for any gamified project. All these and other observations suggest that in developing a gamification project, competitive pleasure should be taken into serious consideration as the primary motivating factor of involvement and participation, but it should also be calibrated with great sensitivity and precision in order to get passionate about the initiative, the maximum number of participants possible. The narrative dimension, the gamification, and storytelling. That narratives are an integral part of a considerable amount of games that are not needed to be demonstrated since it is part of everyone's experience. Stories are often the basis of games, and this is evident for their title. Video games do not escape this general rule. In fact, a large number of them rely on more or less complex storytelling, developments to support the ability to engage and train players. In summary, it can be observed that storytelling can make a valuable contribution to gamification projects under the following aspects, sense, interest, and identification, involvement, and progression. In gamification 3.0, it is necessary to approach individuals to achieve an awareness of their rules, their behaviors, and their motivations. It is very different evolutionary stage than to more traditional projects. Users are often involved only with simple systems or levels and final rewards. The current defined phase of gamification 2.0, in which digital media are giving life to some personalizations experiences. This, the design of a gamification 3.0 project is characterized by four closely integrated levels. First, activity tracking. All players' activity must be tracked and monitored. This becomes the basis of the entire project. Second, personality types. There are different ways to group users according to their personality. Third, big data analytics, especially for gamification projects that have as their goal an important change in people. It becomes necessary to collect as much data as possible, both inside and outside the perimeters of the gamification project. 
behavioral framework parallel with the other action, it is important to understand the emotions and motivation of the individuals. When considered separately, the four design pillars have some limitations. On the contrary, instead, a synergistic uh, uh, and integrated approach allows to obtain great benefits by defining an innovative, inclusive, and sustainable gamification 3.0 uh, system. The benefits of gamification are a lot. Fun, gamification can entertain and relax and, and give users a good time. Involvement, it is one of the primary purposes of, of gamified projects. Motivation, gamification can support motivation by stimulating people to perform otherwise boring tasks. Time, if a site includes the baby elements, the average time spent on it by users generally tends to increase. Loyalty, as in the case of Starbucks, gamification can be effective in raising the levels of loyalty of its consumers and customers. Influence, when the game dynamics offered are appreciated, they are able to orient and influence their users. Retention, in terms of learning, game mechanics have many kinds to play in supporting the ability to retain content of all kinds. Learning experience, if truly capable of entertaining, gamification can affect the entire learning experience, making it much more exciting. Data collection, gamification platforms usually require a lodging via email address and social credentials. And the, these allows uh, for the generation of large amounts of data. The advantages uh, uh, of gamification, as you can see, are therefore multiple. But there are also some uh, risks and mistakes. Gamification is an ascent practice with which uh, uh, most users have a little experience. Since there are not yet consolidated the practices, it, in the, uh, it is understandable uh, that mistakes can easily be made. A list of them are legal aspects, quantification, privacy, intellectual pro property, gambling, deceptive practices, superficial motivations, too quick rewards, lack of support, predictability, possibility of cheating. And now let's speak about gamification in teaching. According to Jake McGonigal, all games have four defining traits in common, an objective, a set of rules, a feedback system, and the voluntary nature of participation. These four elements are always present in an essential way in any activity that we can call a game. The goal is what gives a direction to the game, clarifies the purpose, sets a goal. The rules gives, give a shape to the game and make it clear to players, which are the other ways to reach the goal. All players are equally in front of the game. Each player needs to know when he has reached his goal or when he is close to reaching it. Uh, for this, every game must be equipped with a feedback, feedback system. The feedback can be presented as a ranking, as a score. The element of voluntariness is the most important one. The player chooses to play. Every game is first and foremost a free act. The imposed game is no longer a game, writes right, Azing. Game categories. Gamification is the application of game elements to non-playful context. Um, so we will place it in the upper right quadrant, gameful design, gamification. When, on the other hand, we are dealing with the real games, we are talking about serious games with an education purpose. At the bottom left, we found the toys, that is the real game. The last quadrant at the bottom right represents the playful design, that is the application of some playful elements, typical of the game. Player learning. Study and fun are often seen as a contradictory. Much depends on how you study and play. Researchers that investigate moments of leisure take the point of view of the adult. Only recently has the game of the adolescents been considered as a response to the same needs for entertainment, escape from reality or, or building friendships. Teenage play uh, has become a field of interest in developmental uh, psychology, which has uh, associated it with building their intelligence. Children learn while they play, 
Uh, and it is on the basis that we find the union between play and learning, whatever from the game takes. Education in the early part of the 20th century tended to focus on the acquisition of basic skills and knowledge on content such as reading, writing, and arithmetic. Many experts, on the other hand, believe that success in the 21st century depends on an education that develops complex, uh, higher level skills, uh, such as the ability to think, solve problems, and interact critically throughout language and media. And for these skills uh, acquired uh, with the game are fundamental. As we know, those uh, born between 1960 and 1980 belong to the so-called Generation X, currently called the digital immigrants, such as uh, we teachers are. The digital natives uh, were born between 1980 and uh, 2000 uh, and are uh, the generation Y. But we teachers are dedicated to the so-called children belonging to the generation Z, born after 2000. This new generation uses new technologies and most unconsciously and dedicates on average in life less than 5,000 hours of reading, but over 10,000 hours to video game practice. Digital natives are used to receiving information quickly. They prefer graphics to text. They are more productive when they are connected to the network. They, they enjoy the games or talk to full work more. Digital immigrants have a little appreciation for these new skills that the natives have acquired and perfected over years of interaction and practice. These are skills almost totally unrelated to digital immigrants, who have themselves learned and therefore chosen to teach it slowly, step by step, one thing at a time, individually. Digital immigrants don't believe that the students can successfully learn while watching TV or listening to music. Digital immigrants think that learning cannot be fun. The generation Z is the first to be always connected, always connected with the technology, especially touch, to represent a real body extension. About 90% of this generation routinely use video games making the most important medium of overwhelming entertainment products, such as books, movies, and music. We are talking about a growing mass of individuals who expect uh, to find in school life that interaction experienced in the long hours in front of a screen. And an epochal change that is taking place in schools, I get unprepared and to understand the new dynamics of creating engagement. The risk for this generation is to find themselves in a strongly demoralizing environment and to have a totally misaligned at the school work. The skill of the modern teacher. Uh, like most professions today, there are major developments in the field of teaching, which are being driven by social and technological changes. Uh, keeping these skills up to date will be crucial to guaranteeing a scrupulous and adequate and innovative preparation, such as the advent of gamification in school teaching. The skills needed to be a good teacher have changed. Uh, the 10 skills of a good teacher are uh, he has to be engaged, prepared, organized, tolerant, he has to be a, a storyteller, uh, open to questions, innovative, having a digital propensity practice of social media and a web expert. Slowly, something is changing. For example, in the Anglo-Saxon world, there are numerous institutes and teachers who have introduced the gamified applications and gamification as an integral part of their frontal teaching with numerous advantages. The student's brain is passion to produce dopamine, which carries information between the cells making up the nervous system. Dopamine orients attention, memory, and favors the creations of connections between neurons. Uh, the latter are called the synapses and are the physical basis of learning. Gamified applications applied to training. Many obsolete and effective training models are still based on a tell-test logic in which the student is seen only as a passive receptor of notions. 
Today, training uh, uh, is no longer limited to transmitting uh, knowledge, but it is about uh, the ability to involve students in stimulating their interests and capturing their attention. Play is a cognitive tool in which the subject is an active protagonist, and this is what, what maximizes the effectiveness of learning. Some significant teaching experiences that use elements of a successful gamification are analyzed below. Let's Go. Class Dojo. It is an application that helps teachers manage their class by facilitating, facilitating the immediacy and strength of feedback, simulating continuous improvement in pupils, and ultimately creating a more interactive and profitable learning environment. Class Dojo allows teachers to help their pupils reflect on their progress and encourage certain behaviors with the virtual recognition and timely feedback. It should be born in, the, in mind that the brain is made up of two hemispheres. The right one, which is the most irrational, instinctive, and impulsive part, in which emotions affect and throughout which individually and the creative vision are expressed. And the left hemisphere, uh, which is the most reflective part that evaluates all the data in our possession in a rational and analytical way, orienting one's choices in the best possible way. It is also a tool to involve parents and communicate with them immediately throughout reports and statistics that can be printed or sent by email. But the advantages so as well as for families are above uh, all for students as each student is uh, in the system. Corresponds uh, to an avatar that represents him or her. The avatar constitutes a virtual pro projection of himself or herself and therefore refers to the core drive possession. Is able to monitor the evolution of their skills in real time. In this case, uh, we are talking about levels in the rankings, uh, so the reference is to the progress core drive. Can see the results achieved, recognized, and be rewarded for virtuous behaviors. The prizes and positive feedbacks are shared with the rest of the class. So in this way, virtuous dynamics are triggered um, and, and that can be traced back to the relationality core drive. And now let's speak about Metagon, a new way to learn math. Learning mathematics and geometry can be difficult, mainly because they are abstract languages that refer to theoretical procedures and concepts. Many students um, find these disciplines too complex or believe they are not good at the subjects in question. I think it is necessary to have a solid foundation to be able to solve problems of increasing the difficulty. It is important to fully understand the concepts. Mm. So that learning in the subsequent phases is easier. But how to get a real understanding of these matters? By bringing abstract language closer to concrete uh, life, students must be able to understand how mathematics characterizes and influences our day life. Numbers are the basis of our, our actions, our choices, and what surrounds us. We are use numbers uh, to calculate distances, to calculate prob probabilities whenever we find ourselves out across the roads, uh, to make a purchases and for many other things. With a Matigon, uh, uh, math uh, has never been uh, this fun. It is a revolutionary tool for teaching and learning math. And what's more, it's totally free. The platform is also available in uh, um, many languages, uh, but some contents have not yet been uh, translated, uh, but uh, they are available only in English. But let's see what it is. The site has uh, three sections, courses, polypod, and activities. Courses. In courses, you can find uh, interactive lessons for learning geometry, algebra, and arithmetic. The contents are divided by school grade and by topic. We'll find the equations, trigonometry, fraction, probability, uh, calculations, statistics, poly polygons, and much more. The innovative aspect of this tool is that for each topic, uh, there are theoret theoretical explanations accompanied by practical demonstrations and exercises aimed at um, explaining step-by-step -step the procedures um, underlying the concept in question. 
after choosing a topic, students will have the opportunity to read the introduction and see the practical application of what is contained in the theoretical part. They will have to answer questions correctly in order to proceed. And thanks to multimedia supports, such as an interactive images, they will be able to understand why that answer is considered the con correct. For each lesson, uh, there are various subtopics which, upon completion, will allow students to master the topic. Let's take uh, some practical examples. The Monty Hall problem is a famous probability theory problem related to the USA prize game, let's make a deal. The game is very simple. The player has a three closed doors in front of him. Behind one of these, there is a car, Behind the other two, there are goats. The player chooses a door and the ender opens one of the two remaining one, ones, in which in one of these, uh, obviously there will be a goat. At this point, he asks the competitor if he wants to change the door or not. What should the player do in this case? Matigon will give you the answer. The student can actually play this game and see why the competitor will do better to change the door uh, to have a better chance of winning. What will the result in an abstract and complex reasoning becomes so simple and intuitive? Then let's, let's speak about Polypad. It allows you to manipulate and interact with your various geometric shapes. Uh, in the left panel, you can select polygons, rulers, uh, numeric bars, fraction bars, numbers, tangram shapes, and much more. Just click on the shapes to insert them in the worksheet. The latter can be moved or rotated using uh, the connected circle. The forms are divided by topic, and there are also tools to practically demonstrate the games introduced in the lessons of the courses. For example, it will be possible to insert dice, which can be virtually rolled to make random numbers appear, or playing the cards. At the bottom of the center is a toolbar that includes tools for drawing, such as pen and uh, pencils, tools for creating lines and circles, tech boxes and equations, an eraser and the check box of colors to change the color of the pen and shapes. On the right, uh, there is another panel that allows you to insert grids, change settings, and download or share your work. Clicking on, the, on download image, you uh, will automatically start the load, while we will have to the, poss the possibility to share the polypad using a link and embed the code or other platforms such as, uh, uh, for example, Google Classroom. However, it is necessary to register on the platform. By clicking on the library, you can enter more complex forms. And also, um, by clicking on activities, at the top left, um, you will have access to many contents and lesson plans. Then let's speak about activities and courses. Here we will find tons of fun activities to engage your students. For example, we have a treasure hunt a station game or a leash in fractal land to the pink Pascal triangle and fractals. Maticon is truly a fantastic tool with a lot of potential. It uh, will, uh, will surely be a valuable resource for math teachers who want to add an extra touch to their lessons. It is an online platform for interactive mathematics learning. It is uh, translated into a lot of uh, different languages, and to the some parts are still only available in English. The courses available at, uh, at first and second grade, secondary school level, but as well uh, as uh, we'll see, there are useful tools already starting from primary schools. Each uh, course is divided into several chapters of increasing the difficulty and with a small exercise to help overcome in order to continue reading. Uh, as I said, uh, Matigon is uh, uh, useful for prim primary school. In fact, uh, within Matigon, uh, there is a powerful visual tool called the Polypad, as I said before, which uh, can also be used in primary school. With the Polypad, it is possible to man manipulate uh, geometric shapes, mainly in two dimensions, learning to recognize patterns and developing a problem solving skills. Polypad can also be used to do math with the, the digital board, thanks to a clean but effective graphic interface. 
the manipulated shapes uh, are divided in, into sections, geometry, numbers, fractions, a feature that allows you to work around the precious mathematical topics. And uh, you can see some polypad uh, home screen. In the number section, you can find the rulers, bars that can be easily positioned uh, on the screen. Alignment is automatic, so you don't need to, uh, to have greater precision. Matic on the number bars, the fractions are achievable in two different ways. Geometry allows you to build complex shapes, starting from the primitive ones that can be rotated on the screen. And you can change also their color. This is perhaps the most interesting part of the polypad, and it is particularly satisfying to use it with the devices equipped with the touch screens. Here you can see some shapes that I added together. I changed the, I changed the uh, uh, colors, their shapes, and their, and their uh, position. And a large series of games allows you to play with the mathematical mathematics either in commonly used objects, uh, such as a simple clock, as you can see here, or uh, there are also chess. The section related to information technology is also interesting, where among other things, it is possible to work with the logic gates. Um, the conditions and the costs uh, of use, Maticon can be used as a browser, therefore without installation, but with an internal connection always active. Or it can, it can be installed as an app for Android or iOS. Currently, there is no cost of use and many sections do not even need to create a personal account. Uh, although it is useful to have it to store your progress. It should be noted that uh, the free use of Maticon is limited to non-commercial purposes. There is therefore no problem for use at school for this reason. And now let's speak about another tool very interesting, Matific. It is another experiment of applying the gamification in mathematics for primary school and the first grade of the lower secondary school. It represents an extraordinary resource for engaging and stimulating the students in the development of their mathematical skills. Yes. Because a Matific it is, to all intents and purposes, a great adventure in which, on the one hand, the contents are proposed with absolute scientific rigor and in an exhaustive and meaningful way. Um, on the other hand, a playful learning environment is integrated with dynamic and concrete elements in order to immerse students in mathematical thinking. Another aspect that is guaranteed in Matific is the absolute personalization of the learning paths, accompanied by tools of, for ongoing formative evaluation. The activities in Matific can be assigned by the teacher by choosing the most appropriate contents or by entrusting the algorithm integrated into the platform with the tasks of sending the students the new exercises always proposed in a manner consistent with the game-based learning chosen in relation to age for every children. Students entering a safe and secure environment with the possibility of involving the parents to follow the paths they have taken, also have the opportunity to carry out a sort of entrance check to carry out a mapping of their skills and areas that deserve greater depending. As you can see from the major, the graphical interface of Matific is very pleasant and colorful, the same as in any great adventure game, where the absolute protagonist is the student who can choose to carry out the assigned tasks, enter a gym where to strengthen their skills, embark on a great adventure in which they will have to proceed independently, and to do so, they will be called to solve mathematical problems. Ultimately, Matific allows even less motivated children to love mathematics, allows them to develop solid mathematical foundations, tools contributing to an improvement in results, speed up and streamlines the most repetitive activities, allowing the teachers to focus their attention on learning the dynamics of their students. And now I want to speak to you about um, a game, uh, a video game that uh, has been developed uh, in Italy. Uh, specially created by some developers and programmers uh, that uh, uh, have tested it, and its name is Fun Go, the serious game format SGM project founded by the FUR project of the University of Catania, 
aims to create an, an experiment serious game for learning basic mathematical concepts. The SGM projecting team involves computer scientists and graphics for the design and implementation of games from a painful point of view and mathematicians experts in teaching for the design in terms of mathematical content and testing of games at schools. The recipients of the project's products are secondary school pupils, I'm a school. As a part of this SGM project, the Affirmation Working Group has developed a video game called the Functioning Group, FANGO, for the acquisition and consolidation of concepts relating to the real functions of a real variable to be proposed to students of the three years of a secondary high school uh, of a second degree. For the realization of FANGO, some video games of the past uh, that have been very successful among young people were taken as a model, in particular Super Mario Bros. Fango, in fact, shares the basic mechanics of the platform games uh, that is a, a horizontal scrolling system in which the player is required to maneuver a character, uh, male or female, which uh, from here on we will call avatar. Fango begins by inviting players, students, obviously, to choose the avatar with which they will identify themselves during the game session. As you can see in this figure, there is a boy and a girl, two avatars, game avatar. The aim of the game is to finish the three proposed levels in the shortest possible time, collecting virtual coins and learning others by solving the mathematical questions. For each correct answer, in fact, the player will have a bonus co in coins. Such coins can be exploited, as we will see below, to request help in answering the mathematical questions. In case of wrong answer, the player will have a penalty in terms of playing the time. The avatar has infinite lives. Every time it, die, it dies, it starts again from the last checkpoint, that is from the last point where an answer was given. The avatar moves uh, in a game world uh, where playful parts alternate with the didactic parts. In fact, some of the skills required are closely related to playing the skills, jumping, finding coins in either parts, while other skills are related to the acquisition of a consolidation concept relating to mathematical functions. Uh, there are three types of roads uh, or sections. Game tried. The, the one that runs throughout the avatar, avoiding the traps and winning coins. Virtual coins are scattered along the levels and the avatar will have to collect them and also look for secret uh, places, not directly direct, related to the main game part. There are also traps that the player will be able to evade under penalty or a slowdown in the game or the loss of virtual coins. These segments are the purely playful part of the game and are interspected uh, with the two types of educational series segments listed below. Crossroad section, the avatar is faced with two or three parts and will have to choose the correct part based on the question displayed. For the example, the player receives the following indication. Choose the part that repeats periodically. A correct answer in this phase of the game will see the avatar moving autonomously throughout an animation along the correct path towards the next, next to the game zone. If you do not choose the only right path among those proposed, you will be able to restart from the last checkpoint, resulting in a loss of time and worsening of the game statistics. These segments are three per level and will always reoccur the same every time you log into the game. They are presented as an approach to the concepts related to functions, linear functions, uh, increasing quadratic functions, and so on, and can be faced by the student even without any mathematical knowledge by appealing to intuition and the conceptual metaphor that links the concepts related to functions with the related concepts to the moment. For example, in this uh, uh, figure, uh, our crossroad section in which the request is uh, to choose the path that is repeated uh, periodically. Uh, Trapped chess, the avatar comes from a cross a chess inside which there is a multiple choice questions with the four answers, which must be answered in order to move forward. 
If you make a big mistake, as I, we said before, you will start from the last checkpoint. There are four chess tries for level, but they are randomly drawn with a list of 20 questions. These traits therefore change each time the game is repeated. The questions of the cache features are aimed at consolidating uh, mathematical concepts and the quality of the students' learning. The intent is to generate non-notional but to profound learning. The questions are in fact designed to make the student reflect on concepts rather than mechanically applying the rules and uh, are often drawn from problems similar to real problems. For example, here of a question in the chess trite, in the question of the chess trites, the player can ask for help by paying for it with the coins won by playing. Specifically, 10 coins to receive a hint, 15 coins for the elimination of two wrong answer options, uh, 20 coins to change the question. Help options using uh, the collected coins. At the end of the level, uh, the player's stats uh, uh, will be collect collected in a leaderboard to be able to compare the results with those of other players. The final ranking takes into account the amount of coins that can be collected at the end. The fewer coins um, uh, you have in the end, the more likely they have abused to answer questions. Each of the three levels contains questions of increasing difficulty on various mathematical aspects, and it will not be possible to start one of the following levels without first completing the previous one. Fango exper experimentation. Once the game was ready, care was taken to test it. Tests have uh, given very satisfactory results. In fact, the guarantee of full usability of the game has emerged without requiring special instructions. The game was published both throughout the project website and throughout its presentation to group of teachers who participated in various training experiences with experts in mathematics education. Voluntarily, some of these teachers from the north or the, to the south of Italy, experimented with the game in their own classes during the second quarter of the school year. They were equipped with an experimentation protocol drawn up by mathematics didactic experts and a PDF file containing all the questions in the Fango database divided by levels. Each teacher was therefore able to evaluate how far 12 of their students to push themselves in order to be able to both play and answer mathematical questions, having acquired the knowledge and all skills necessary to be uh, able to understand and solve them. Uh, the students are always work in, in group of two, three students. The data are still being analyzed, but the following general considerations can be reported. The students involved in the experiments were very proactive, enthusiastic, and also proud to be involved in such a project. Some teachers put it in this way. Uh, a teacher said, the game was useful because the public's involvement was higher than the traditional lesson, because they enjoyed the pleasure and novelty, because it served as an interactive uh, review. Another uh, teacher said the questions were of medium difficulty, neither too difficult, not too easy, not making the, the game easy or boring, excellent for verifying the contents learning, learned in a classroom, in an in environment different from a classical verification, where the level of emotional tension is higher. During the discussion on, on the questions, that the students and not be able to answer, the pupils participated actively. They were more focused than with the normal correction. They remembered the questions well and clarified their doubts. Uh, there was also no lack of suggestions for students, real protagonists of the game phase, uh, to optimize the game. Here are some testimonials. When we make a mistake, it doesn't tell us what the correct answer was. I would have liked to have known about certain questions. I like the game very much, but sometimes you couldn't see the entire part, so we didn't know if they were going, let's say, towards that, or there was a point to jump or go back. These and other feedbacks have been invaluable and will certainly be taken into consideration. 
In fact, further developments of the game will follow to make it even more pleasant from the point of view of graphics, less even in execution and more transparent than the mathematical content proportion. From the testimonies reported above all by teachers, uh, it emerged that the form of the game represents the means um, uh, to achieve the different objective related to learning and not to the end, and uh, is the case with the mainstream video games. In recent years, there has been a pervasive and global change in the world of learning, favored by the ability of increasingly sophisticated technologies. We believe that having as a goal to apply to the world of learning is to increase the levels of involvement and motivation of those who learn is not wrong at all. Indeed, this seems to be a step to take to make the training process more and more effective to the treatment of traditional teaching formats, too distant from the current reality. In this scenario, serious games can be considered as a tool of choice to feel involved and at the same time learn. We therefore believe that the experience gained so far thanks to these projects uh, is important and can constitute a significant starting point for further projects in the same uh, sector. And another tool that we uh, use very uh, very uh, often is CAUT. CAUT is the best app for teachers to use um, in the classroom. It is a basic learning platform used for educational purposes in schools and other educational institutions. It is a platform throughout which uh, interactive quiz games can be created on school subjects, in particular mathematics. To, to access the quizzes created, which are called the codes, students must use the PIN code provided by the teacher. Uh, the teacher can create codes then that students can play all together at the same time, for example, during a distance less learning lesson, or quizzes that the children can play independently when they wish. You can also explore codes and see quizzes uh, created by the other teachers. Any teacher who has uh, never done this should try with a direct class to adopt the moments of interactive play using platforms such as Kahoot. Today's pupils are naturally inclined to use electronic devices. They will be very happy to approach learning throughout play, and in particular the video game. It is a colorful, captivating platform that offers many possibilities such as interactive images and sounds in Kahoot. But what uh, advantages can platforms uh, like out offer in teaching? It is easy to be used. Creating a quiz is very simple thanks to the rack and drop mode. The platform also guides the teacher throughout the game creation process and provides assistance. You start by creating the title of your quiz and then you create the questions. For each question, it is possible to insert images. But if you don't uh, insert them, they are automatically inserted by Kahoot to make the game more graphically attractive. The questions can also be combined with the YouTube links videos. The basic uh, basis is uh, gamification. Thanks to our interactive games, students will be more motivated to participate and learn mathematics, as play is a natural inclination of the little ones, but also the, all the older ones. Structured learning is a play, in a playful case is in fact a powerful engine capable of improving the motivation, attention, concentration, and involvement. Learning while having fun is always something positive and definitely appreciated by everyone. Many publishers of mathematics uh, books have dedicated a large section of Kahoot mood assessment in their school books. Exercises already created and optimized for each teaching unit from geometry, probability, logic, uh, arithmetics, algebra, and so on um, uh, are ready to be used or modified at will. They are represented in all the first and second grade secondary language courses. Its interface makes it suitable for cl all classes usable by younger children up to secondary school children. Uh, the ability to create customized quizzes uh, um, allows each teacher to adapt them to the topics objectives uh, um, and obviously the need of the, their pupils. Okay, yes. 
play. But in the meantime, we evaluate also. Uh, the quizzes are very useful for the teacher to understand where his class is in relation uh, to a certain learning objective. Um, throughout the answer uh, to the questions, the teacher can understand which are the internalized and consolidated topics and which are instead those to, to, to because they need the enforcement. Quizzes can be used instead of traditional written tests. Uh, and at the end of the two tests, it is possible, in fact, to review the scores and questions, uh, discover the right answers and the wrong answers. Without a dupe, the CAUT and other similar platform are another way to approach school tests and activities. Today's children and young people have been immersed in technology practically from birth. Technology must not become the only tool with which to teach, but it is unthinkable not to use it. I have prepared, for example, a simple CAUT uh, on fractions, uh, as you can see here. Uh, to see how it works and how you can participate. There are 12 to, uh, answers. Uh, for example, right with uh, which fraction in the yellow color the part corresponds to. You can begin the game and uh, uh, the students give a pin, they um, put it in the, uh, on their device and they begin the game. Let's continue and speak. let's speak about another tool, very useful, for gamification, learning apps, a real platform of didactic games from which to draw evenly and above all with, with which to create and update student create games. Crosswords, engine demand, pain, sensitive maps, timelines are just some examples of a possible playful solutions to choose from among 15 opportunities. Of using all multimedia, texts, images, videos, audio, and even text recited from the PC in different languages. While on the other hand, uh, on the one hand, they can stimulate the creativity of the student who engages in the creation of games and who must know the subject to do so. Uh, on the other hand, it can, can become a moment of review and, or verification or understanding. Simple tool for the realization, it is uh, delivered the tool. It is also played very well from tablets and mobile phones. You can organize the classes and check who and how they play it a must for capturing the attention and concentration of your students at, at, of any age. Here, for example, I show you the millionaire game, very famous on TV uh, all over the world and adapted for famous on TV, uh, mathematics. It becomes engaging and fun, and the students while playing do not realize that they are studying. For, for example, there are some answers about equations. Uh, can you find the solutions of these equations uh, uh, in rational numbers? The solution of the equation 2x minus 3 equal 5 is, what's it, what is the right answer? It is 4. I gave the right answer, so I can go uh, to the next uh, uh, question. The solution of the equation, uh, etc., is, this is the right answer, so I go, uh, if, uh, go to the next. Uh, Question. I want to conclude my speech about gamification in mathematics with a phrase, a citation of the great philosopher of the ancient times, Plato, a Greek philosopher that said not to teach disciplines with the compulsion, but as playing. You will thus be able to discover the individual tendencies of each one. My presentation is ended, and uh, I want to thank you all for the great opportunity uh, for listening to me, and I hope uh, you found it uh, very useful for your teaching. Uh, let's teach with mathematics with the gamification. It uh, will be all more exciting for our students and more involving. Uh, I thank you, uh, and I uh, thank IIU for the great opportunity for sharing my knowledge, and I say you all bye-bye.